Welcome. I'm grateful for the opportunity to connect with you through this recording and pray that uh, we'll be richly blessed as we spend some time in God's Word together. Today is Sunday, March 22nd, also the fourth Sunday of Lent. Here at Heritage Church, we have been making our way through the I Am sayings of Jesus, and we come this morning in the Gospel of John chapter 10 to Jesus saying, I am the Good Shepherd. Before we hear from God's Word, however, please pray with me for a moment. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would open our eyes and ears and hearts to hear the words of our Good Shepherd. Remind us in these anxious times, these times of discord, these times of uh, low civility amongst people, that you call us to a better path. Speak, O God, your word into our hearts, that we would trust the voice of our Shepherd and follow him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture is, again, the Gospel of John, chapter 10. I'll be reading verses 11 through 21. Listen to the word of God. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I will bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from the father. At these words, the Jews among them were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? This is God's word for us here today. I want to begin by sharing actually a passage from the Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew chapter 9. Matthew tells us that Jesus is traveling through the villages and cities. He is teaching in the synagogues or the religious centers of the Jewish people. He is preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Then we read these words in verse 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Can't help but take some of these words and apply them to our current present day. I, among many others, I'm sure, have felt a little harassed and certainly somewhat helpless. But I wonder about those last few words. Do we feel like sheep without a shepherd? Quite frankly, many people would be offended that I even raised the question. But in the midst of this beautiful passage from the Gospel of John, Jesus is asking who is your shepherd? Or even, what shepherd will you follow? You see here in these words, Jesus sets up a clear contrast. There is the good shepherd and there are those who are not. Well, how can we tell if something or someone is a bad shepherd? Well, Jesus clearly says here in this passage, the tell of a bad shepherd is that if a difficult moment comes, that shepherd runs. In fact, listen again to verse 13. Jesus says he runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I imagine people that day as they heard Jesus say these words would have echoed his sentiment in that they knew a story or two about a bad shepherd. They knew that bad shepherds were weak, that a bad shepherd lacked courage, that a bad shepherd cared more about themselves than they did the sheep. So what's the tell of a good shepherd? The good shepherd lays down his life 
for his sheep. It's that simple. And yet, of course, so profound. The bad shepherd will defend himself ahead of the needs of the sheep. The good shepherd will stop at nothing to protect the sheep. And Jesus is asking us in these words, what kind of shepherd do you follow? Now, before someone says Jesus is the answer is too quick, let's reflect for a few moments on the role of a shepherd, both in Jesus' day and long before. We tend to over-sentimentalize the role of a shepherd. If you Google uh, good shepherd even now, you'll find that some of the first pictures that show up are, are quite serene and, uh, quite frankly, quite sanitized. A shepherd in Jesus' day is someone who had to work very hard to protect the sheep. In the wilderness, things were barren. Water was scarce. Food was rare. Safety, a lot of times, was unfounded. And then think about what they had to work with. Sheep. I talked about sheep last Sunday in the message. They're a little un unintelligent, to say the least. They're skittish. They're susceptible. They're always running. And this is the kind of environment in which we see a shepherd working. All that to say, the life of a shepherd wasn't very easy. And here's where Psalm 23 is such an excellent description of a good shepherd. You see, David even knew this about shepherding. A good shepherd will find food. A good shepherd will find water. A good shepherd will find safe paths. A good shepherd will find places of safety. For the sheep. A good shepherd leads sheep to the place where they need to be, so that as he concludes in the end of the psalm, they'll know goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the definition of a good shepherd. And here in John 10, Jesus is asking, which shepherd do you follow? Which voice do you listen to? You see, later in this passage, Jesus does mention that he knows the sheep, and, and the sheep know him. And there are other sheep yet to join this pen. But the thing about all of them is they recognize his voice. Whose voice do we listen to? A study was done many years ago asking teenagers to list what they would go to, what they would turn to in a time of crisis. In the 25th spot on that list, were fathers. Mothers made the 11th position. The top on that list was music. I wonder today what people would put in that same list. What's number one? Where do we go for? Where do we turn to for our help? Washington, Wall Street, you could list any number of things. But clearly none of them equal the good shepherd. None of them compare to that good shepherd we know in Jesus. You see, he's the only one who really fits the bill, so to speak. He is the one who fits the role perfectly because he is the only good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. He did that at Calvary. He did it at the cross. It was necessary because Jesus knows something about us. He knows that we are sheep, and as we read in Isaiah 53, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And then we hear this good news. And the Lord laid on him, that is the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, which clearly points to Jesus. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, the good shepherd also became the lamb he laid down his life. He did so willingly on his own authority. And as Jesus says here in John 10, he even had the authority to raise himself up again. And when he did, we the sheep discover that we don't have to worry about whether we're going to be safe. We don't have to worry whether we're going to be secure. We don't have to worry if he will satisfy us. You see, we find in Jesus the good shepherd. Not only does he lay down his life for us, but hear the words of Psalm 23 ring true. 
He provides all that we need so that we truly are not in want. Which shepherd do we follow? The good news is Jesus, the good shepherd, did what he did so that we could know him, that we could be his sheep. All we have to do is recognize his voice. All we have to do is listen and follow the voice of the one who stared death straight in the face and didn't blink. In 1862, a young man who just recently graduated out of seminary, uh, 1862, by the way, dark days of the Civil War, but a young man, a young pastor, was a graduate of seminary. He went to a church in Philadelphia, and uh, he was asked to preach there. The text assigned to him was Psalm 23. In his message, he emphasized that it doesn't matter how or where God leads us, as long as we know he is leading us. The story goes that after the service that morning, he penned these words to a well-known hymn. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I will be. For by his hand, he leadeth me. It doesn't matter how or where God leads us. Because by faith we know that Jesus is the good shepherd. And he is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And he is the good shepherd that if we'll listen to his voice and follow him, he will take us to green pastures and quiet waters and restore our soul. I encourage you to listen to a YouTube version of this beautiful hymn, He Leadeth Me, and I'll post it below uh, in the comment section. But let me close with this. Whose voice are you listening to? What shepherd are you following? These are interesting days, but only one, only one is the good shepherd. Only one leads us to the Father. Only one leads us to the only comfort we have in life and in death because we belong to him. May you hear his voice. May you listen to his voice. May you follow the voice of the good shepherd, the one who promises and assures us that he will lead us by his hand. May we be his faithful followers in light of the grace that is given us the joy of knowing him, and the hope that is found in Jesus. Please join me in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of Christ who is our good shepherd. Lead us, O God, into his everlasting arms. Help us find there again that there is hope, peace, comfort, and joy. Because he is the one who leads us. He is the one who in times of joy and sorrow in all ways, guides us. Grant to us, O God, joy in this journey as we follow him. In the blessed assurance that comes in knowing the Good Shepherd, may we be those who love deeply, who serve faithfully, who give joyfully, and doing all of this for the sake of the one who is the Good Shepherd. Do this, O God, through the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me. God's blessing to you. Uh, May God turn his face towards you and grant you his peace today and in every day.